Good afternoon and welcome to Bethune Cookman University on the campus here in the Larry Hanfield Athletic Training Center. I'm Lynn Thompson. Welcome to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. Today we'll talk about the big season opening win, 79 to 16. The Cats celebrated over Virginia University Lynchburg, bringing their record to one and one. Terry Sims, the head football coach, sits in with us. And coach, uh, this was what you expected to happen and uh, maybe a week late, but nonetheless, it happened, and boy, did it happen big with lightning strikes all over the field and no rain in sight. Yeah, I'm very pleased with, with, with our offensive football team. Uh, Quayshon Bird uh, had an exciting day. Uh, he kind of set an FCS record. He scored rushing, receiving, and uh, on a kickoff return. Yeah, for the, fa for the fans out there, we're going to talk about the, uh, the offensive input uh, when we come back in just a few minutes, defense and special teams. We'll look around the league as we always do. But for this particular segment, before we kick it to the highlights, Coach, uh, what did you say to the team uh, coming out of last week's loss at Tennessee State in Nashville to get them prepared uh, before their home fans here in Daytona Beach? Well, first of all, I told them just that. We're going home. We're going to play in front of our home crowd. Uh, last weekend, it, it, it was an embarrassing loss, and I think we all took it personal. And, you know, the guys showed it in the week of practice. Yeah, they certainly did, and they, they responded like you predicted that they would respond. They came out. We were stopped in the opening drive, but then the second possession and then every possession thereof, Coach, the Cats hit, and they hit fast. Let's take a look now at the highlights from the big 79-16 win against Virginia University Lynchburg. Cash, Dragon Show blitz up the middle. Snap to Israel, play fakes, throws towards the near side seam. It's caught, he breaks a tackle, runs outside of the numbers. The 15, the 10, the 5, John Thomas in for a touchdown. Maroon and goal. Great. Right. Left side of receiver right. Snap, it's a handoff right up the middle, and there's that Wildcat defense dropping him for a loss. He's right. He can have him. Second down and nine, another gift to Newman. The left side breaks a tackle by Howard, and he slung down near the line of scrimmage. The outside backer, Marquise Hendricks, number 19. After Bird is his tail back on second to right. Snap to Williams. Dumped off Bird, far side, caught the 25 and 30. There he goes. 35 40, 45 50, 45 40. Inside the 30. Bird turns up at the 20, the 15. Nobody's catching this bird. Touchdown, Maroon and Gold. Well, I've been waiting for a whole year to see that. Almost two years. That's the speed, the electricity. Of course, he was flexed out to the right. Snap to Stevenson. Steps up to the near side. Now under pressure. Zips it. It's picked off. BCU down the near side. 25 20. 15 10 5. Nobody's touching him. Touchdown, Maroon and Gold. And there is Peters, number 21. A junior college player, and he picked a snap of the shotgun. Here it is, gives it off, and Tomas Newman is drilled in the backfield. That defensive line. Here's the snap. Drifts back, clean pocket, throws right side. It's caught at the 27 yard line. A great juke at the 25. Mitchell down near the 20 yard line. Looks like he has just enough for a Wildcat first and two. Chunks through the air, first and 10 at the 21 from the far right hash. BC up 21 0. Snap to Williams, wants to throw. Unleashes it near side, caught by Jackson, the 15. Down the seam of the 10, and he's got a first and goal as he slides forward at the three yard line. That's Waves the shotgun, trips out to the right. Snap, keeps it out to the left side, and goes in untouched. Touchdown, Maroon and goal. Ah, uh, he's an addition here in the pistol. Snap to him, hands it off to Moss Newman is brought down for a safety. Kevin Thompson hit him in the backfield and hung on for dear life. And the Bethune Cookman defense has now scored nine points today. That's a, that's a great job for BCU. Snap is out to the right. Israel picks it up on the ground, now runs. At the 10, at the five, cuts in, still on his feet, leans for the end zone. Touchdown, Maroon and goal. That's a tough run there, that time by that. Trent Bridges from the land of senior the snap and Bridges comes in and sends him packing at the 36 yard line second sack of the year for the senior out of Delane. It's it for the catch of the 17 pistol is Williams snap keeps it runs out to the left throws to the end zone open man caught Kevon Mitchell touchdown Maroon and goal. Good look at play. The interior now snap handoff in he's mad in the backfield Marquez Ford punishes number 34 in the backfield it's first half. Robinson turns up the 50, 
spins up the 48, lots of room far side at the 35 to 30, the 25 to 20, and Jimmy Robinson takes it in. Touchdown, Maroon and Gold. Painted. Third and seven takes a deep shot down the left sideline, and it's intercepted inside the 10. Bam Laguerre picks it off, his second interception of the day for BCU. Like that, that cost you a touchdown. Best gets to kick off with the right leg. High kick on short. Burr takes the 11 far side. 15 cuts towards the middle of the 20. At the 25, there's room. The 30, the 40, the 45. That's one man to beat, and Burr turns on the Jets. No one will catch Quayshawn Burr. Touchdown, Maroon and Gold. Now you see what I'm talking about. He does, he does, he's north and south. Not a lot of wiggle. He finds the crease and he's gone. For another TFL for the Wildcats. Our final score, Virginia Lynchburg 16, Bethune Cookman 79. Each team starts their journey on separate roads, but they all converge to one, one road to the championship. There will be revenge and redemption. There'll be an Aggie and Eagle standoff. There'll be Bulldogs and Bears colliding with Tigers and Spartans, Hornets fighting off Bison, and Wildcats rattling the Rattlers. The road has twists and turns, and when it ends, one thing is certain. Only one team will claim the title, MIAC champion. The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us? Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson. Terry Sims sits in with me as always. Coach, uh, 606 yards of offensive firepower that you unleashed this past Saturday. Uh, 477 yards of passing. And this is something that, uh, that you knew that we could do. Uh, and we did it well and we did it often against uh, the Dragons. And is this a precursor of what to expect for weeks to come? I think it is. You know, we, we talked about it early in the season. We have a, a lot of firepower at receiver. Uh, we have a lot of running backs that can catch the ball out of the backfield. And we have quarterbacks that can get the ball to them. So we're, we're definitely uh, counting on our passing game for the season. One of the things that people, uh, most folks, most the casual fan, did not seem to understand. And in the press box, there was a lot of discussion about this. Hitting the swing pass to the Jimmy Robinsons, to the Krishan Birds, uh, Tupac Ismis of the world, those running backs on swing passes are nothing but really toss sweeps. So they're technically running plays. They are, and what you want to do is, is get the ball in your athlete's hands, get them out in space, and, and let them use their athletic ability. Now, is that, as a former quarterback coach, a lot of times that's the more difficult pass. It is, because you don't know the depth or, or, or the, the, the width that the guy is going to be sometimes. You know, it, it's really not an easy pass for quarterbacks, but on Saturday, all of our quarterbacks that played, they did a great job getting that ball out to our My guys. My biggest fear was running, throwing that running back into a brick wall and then having to hear that coming back to the huddle. 
you know. Yeah, and, and you know, it happens sometimes in practice, yeah. you know, because our guys on defense are a little bit, you know, they're used to our offense, so they'll kind of sniff plays out every now and then, and that happens. Now, on, on, on this particular day, Coach, you were able to throw the ball deep and throw it well. The offensive line gave you great protection. Uh, Malik Jackson was able to break free. Uh, first player of the game, you went up deep to him. He could not hold on to it, but you managed to go back twice more to him, and he comes up with two huge touchdowns, uh, 162 yards on the day, uh, catching the ball for, for this new Wildcat. And he's the first player in, in, in our program to do that since Jewel Davis did it at Grambling a couple of years ago. He is, and you know, Malik's just a, a blessing. He's a pleasure uh, to be around as a young man. Uh, you know, he, he started his career at Florida State, came to us as a graduate transfer, and you know, he's just trying to, you know, fit in and, and, and do his part. He's a guy that's big on just doing his job. He wants to learn every day, and, and you can see from his effort on Saturday, he's going out every play. When you look in terms of the performance of your quarterbacks coach, you use the two-headed monster again. You start David Israel once again. He plays well. Then you bring uh, Akevius off the bench and Akevius four touchdown passes on the day. He managed to throw the ball extremely well. They ran the offense with his own lead. Uh, they were able to make the right decisions. One decision on the day that David Israel, immediately when he made it, he regretted it. And that was to try to throw a pass when he was already in the grasp of the defender and it ends up being intercepted. Yeah, and I think, you know, that comes from, you know, just a young man's competitiveness and, and him wanting to, to make a play and, and trying to take it in his own hands instead of just saying, you know, we, we, we got caught on this one, you know, eat the ball and, and get ready to play the next play. Uh, 20 out of 27 for, uh, wow, 477 yards, coach. Uh, several touchdowns on the day, but what misnomer that peaks people won't really understand 20, 29 rushing attempts for only 129 yards. But if we if we add the fact that several of these passes were actually swing passes, thus toss sweeps and the like, uh, a good day offensively for the Cats. It was. It was a very good day for for our offense, and, and we're looking for more to come. One turnover on the day for the Wildcats, coach. Yeah, and, and that one turnover we just we just spoke about, and that, that's a tremendous day for our offense. And, and I, you know, I told him that this this past uh, Sunday when we went out to practice, that's something that you don't see a lot in in our college football games. Three out of seven third down conversions and time of possession over a half hour of total possession, coach. Thirty two minutes you had the ball, and the important thing that every time you had the ball, you did something with it. We'll come back in just a few moments. We'll shift gears and look at the defensive unit and the special teams performance. What a great performance by our special teams and the defense coach. They played well, but I know you had some choice words for them at halftime. More in just a few moments. Each team starts their journey on separate roads, but they all converge to one, one road to the championship. There will be revenge and redemption. There'll be an Aggie and Eagle standoff. There'll be Bulldogs and Bears colliding with Tigers and Spartans, Hornets fighting off Bison, and Wildcats rattling the Rattlers. The road has twists and turns, and when it ends, one thing is certain. Only one team will claim the title, MIAC champion. The DNA of Bethune-Cookman comes from the heart of a great woman whose legacy lives on today in each and every Wildcat. I leave you love. I leave you hope. I leave you a thirst for education. I leave you faith. I leave you finally a responsibility to our young people. Great leaders always leave something for others to follow. What will you leave us?
Ready or not, here I come, you can't hide. There's nowhere to hide. Nowhere to run. It's time to hunt. Welcome back to the BCU Wildcat Football Insider. The Wildcats are one and one on the year with the big 79-16 win at home against Virginia University of Lynchburg. I'm Lynn Thompson. Terry Sims sits in with us. Coach, we talked about the offensive output in the previous segment. Now let's shift gears and talk defensively. Uh, while we did have a total team performance, uh, they were able to move the ball against us in some spurts, and we went into the locker room with the 58-9 halftime lead and they moved the ball in like I said in some spurts and attacked some weaknesses that we gave them was that uh, to their credit or was that to uh, maybe some 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 misassignments on our part well I think it, it was both uh, you know we, we had um, some some misassignments defensively but you got you got to give those guys credit you know they, they call plays and they, they executed their offense and, and moved the ball and uh, when you look in terms of overall stats, Coach, they had a total of 167 yards total offense, 130 yards passing the ball. They could not establish the running game against us. Uh, so they tried to throw to the flanks. Uh, a lot of sacks they gave up. Uh, but they were very competitive, uh, some good skill guys. But you managed to play defensively a lot of ball players. And, and, uh, and I'll tell you what, you were led by Marquise Hendricks with uh, eight total tackles on the day. Yeah, and you know, watching Hendricks do what he what, what he does, and you know, we were looking for that type of day out of him. He's that type of player. Uh, he, he went out and, and he made the plays that he was supposed to make. To Darius Peters, coach uh, takes one to the house, a pick six, uh, four solo tackles. This guy uh, stepped up well, uh, took one. I mean, it was a classic thief of the night. He just stole it and took off, didn't he? Prime example of a guy just doing what he's supposed to do. Uh, you know, we, we went over those, those uh, plays day after day in practice, and, you know, Tidarius is a junior college transfer. He's a guy that came in and, you know, he earned a lot of playing time, and he went out and made plays on Saturday. I think he also had Jamari Laguerre had one as well. Uh, we, we had our secondary, uh, when, when you have the pressure uh, that the defensive front is putting forth on, on the quarterback, we're holding up extremely well, and nobody seems to want to challenge seven. Uh, that's true, and you know our, our defensive line played great on Saturday. When, when you look at the number of guys that we played up front, uh, just trying to, trying to keep guys fresh, and we got great effort out of all the guys that, that ended up playing on Saturday. Uh, Coach, you were able to get uh, a lot of guys involved. Kevin Thompson, Trevin Brid Trenton Bridges, Raheem Terry, all those guys with multiple tackles. Uh, Marquis Ford continues to play extremely well, Coach. Uh, Ford with a, a one and a half sacks. Uh, this guy sold, what, three, t two games, almost four sacks. Yeah, and that's Marcus. Marcus Ford is a tremendous talent. He plays with a lot of energy, uh, and he's becoming a leader of our, our defense right now. Now, I saw uh, you were able to, to really, in, in situations, were able to, to bring fresh bodies off the, off the sidelines, and that's something that you're going to be looking forward to uh, this particular weekend. Coach, we're going to FAU. You got to play. You're going to play a, a fast pace. Uh, run and shoot offense. Uh, Lane Kiffin's going to make sure that he's going to have you on your heels. So how will you attack that? And, and what, what, uh, what part of this game plan, this weekend, past weekend, will play into the strategy for next Saturday? I just think playing as many guys as we can play and, you know, keeping bodies fresh, keeping guys uh, into the game and, and maintaining our focus. Well, we were laser focused this past Saturday, Coach. Now let's shift gears and talk about special teams. Uh, you've got a guy that can break one to the house uh, in terms of returning punts, and now you've got one that can take it to the house on kickoffs, and Keyshawn Bird showed us that. Yeah, you know, we knew Bird could do that when he, he arrived on campus last year. It was just him getting that opportunity. Now it's his time, and, and you know, he had a, a couple positive returns early on, but when, when he got a hold of one and the, the kickoff return team, they, they gave him great blocking. He did just what we thought he could do. Now, w w when, when you look in terms, of, and I wish, I wish Coach Ajon Lockett were here today because, you know, I was afraid that he was going to pull a muscle running down the sidelines too because he gets so excited seeing those special teamers excel that day. 
He does, but he took, he puts a lot of work into those guys, you know, which all of our coaches do. But he 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 takes you know a special pride in getting our special teams units together, and and you know I I appreciate the the you know having a coach that that you know makes special teams important yeah. because it's a phase of the game that can actually win or lose football games when you get in close games. You're absolutely right. We're going to go around the MEAC when we come back in just a few moments and talk about what happened in the league, and then we'll shift our gears to talk about what's going to happen this Saturday, Boca Raton, as the Cats go to FAU. Welcome back to the Wildcat Football Insider. I'm Lynn Thompson as we prepare to close up this week's episode of watching the Cats in action. The Cats win it at home, 79-16. And we'll close the book on the season opener. Coach, uh, great performance all around, but we've got to get better because lining up this week is a much tougher opponent. It is. And, and you know, this is a great game for our team because we'll, we'll get to see where we are. You know, we'll, we'll see where our bar is right now. You, you get to play an FBS team. It'll be a faster team. The, 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 game, the pace of the game will be faster. And you're going you're gonna to play some, some big-time athletes. So we're looking forward to it. Lane Kiffin's uh, Florida Atlantic University Owls coach last year started off slow but rolled at the end and went on to a bowl victory. Uh, they win their conference championship. Uh, I remember going down there last year after the storm and we played them tough early. We were a worn out football team from traveling and having no home for two weeks, but they spread us out. Uh, they, they put us in different situations and were able to take advantage and win at 48 nothing. Yeah, and, and I, I think, you know, no discredit to those guys. They, they came to play a football game. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly what we have to do uh, on this Saturday. Well, coach, let's talk around the league. Uh, before we go back to talk to the FAU, a uh, lot of non-conference games this past weekend. FAMU goes out of league to Troy. Coach, they lose it 59-7. to South Carolina State right down the street, I-4, 38-0 uh, shutout by UCF. Savannah State blanked big in the uh, Miami uh, by the Hurricanes, 77-0. And A&T beats Gardner-Webb, 45-6. to North Carolina Central with the 51-14 win over St. Augustine's. Uh, Norfolk State plays James Madison. They lose it 17 nothing in a game that was called uh, because of bad weather. And Dell State goes out of conference losing 45-14 to to St. Francis. And then Howard uh, wrapping up the non-conference portion of their schedule against Kent State, losing that one on the road 54-14. to For the most part, everybody's got non-conference out of the way. Now, well, once we get through this weekend, for us, it's going to be league 
play? And what will a game against FAU do for us to set us up uh, for our quest to the Celebration Bowl? I think it'll, it'll increase our, our team speed, our game speed. And it'll allow us to, to play a team that's already playing fast and it'll, it'll make us pick up our speed. So I, I think having that going into conference play is great for any football team. What do you worry about most when you play a team like an FAU? Because uh, with them having that ability to score so many points, we saw that they were just uh, shell-shocked by Oklahoma in their first game. But they bounced back with a big home win over Air Force this past weekend. Uh, and and they know, they're known for putting points on the board. It, is it... Is it to the detriment of their defensive output? Uh, the average fan may think that they don't have a good defensive football team when, in fact, they really do. Yeah, they do have a good defense. Uh, you know, when you look at playing Oklahoma, uh, it's Oklahoma. And, and they, they have elite athletes and, and they have great coaches. So Oklahoma w was supposed to put points up mm -hmm. on FAU. They played a, an opponent in Air, for Air Force that was probably a closer uh, match for them, a closer match for their football team. And it was a close game. You know, I think it was 33-27 with, with that score. So we just have to go in uh, this week and, and make sure that we, we maintain our focus and, and make sure that we read our keys and that we're playing uh, 100 miles an hour every time we're on the field. What about depth and what about conditioning, Coach? Uh, because this is going to challenge both of those. We have the opportunity, because it's a non-conference game, to take more players. Uh, but the speed of play will challenge uh, how, how well conditioned the Wildcats are. Right, and, and the one thing that, that we always tell our team, we're never going to lose a game because of conditioning, because we do that. We condition here. Uh, depth, we've added a, a little bit more depth from, from uh, last year. So hopefully with those two things, we, we hold up better and, and we come out on top this weekend. Okay, for the Cats to do that, we've got to play extremely well and not be able to uh, give up the turnovers and make sure we were able to maintain possession in terms of ball control. Coach, uh, we, we wish you the best of luck for all you fans out there that are going to be following the Wildcats. We're going down to Boca Raton, FAU's next on the schedule. If you can't make it, make sure you follow us on the Cat Eye Network and log into all of our social media outlets to follow the Wildcats. For Terry Sims and the Wildcats, I'm Lynn Thompson. We'll see you in South Florida.